Your kids will love McDonald's Happy Meal. It's food and fun in a box. It's a hamburger or cheeseburger, regular size fries, regular size soft drink, and a McDonald's and cookie sampler. It all comes in a Happy Meal box with games, puzzles, jokes, and a prize. A prize? Hello everyone, it is me, Salem. Welcome back to my Chanel. How are you guys doing? Please let me know. So today's video is going to be a little different. I've been wanting to stay away from serious topics just for a little bit and do something a little bit more fun, but still interesting and still broad enough for me to analyze, so don't worry. Can we just take a second to appreciate how good I look? Thank you. I finally even got my nails done some ASMR for y'all. And today's topic is going to be on a topic that I've actually done a research paper on before, but I thought was very interesting and I just really wanted to put it into video format because I realized that um this has some explaining to do. I think it's time for us to talk about the fact that in the past years, fast food advertising has gotten really, really weird and out of hand. Oh, howdy, mom. Call the police. We need to call the police. And the way fast food accounts use social media for this new marketing tactic has really evolved from what we grew up with. Taco Bell arguing with White Castle, Wendy's bullying McDonald's, Denny's very, very disturbing Twitter feed, to Vita's social media Twitter sending their, um, can I even say this on YouTube? Will I get demonetized? Their fluids in a jar to a hater online. And yes, that was from their actual verified account. What is happening? Like I remember not too long ago, I was playing in McDonald's Technicolor Indoor Playground. And then the next thing I know, KFC has a DILF. Maybe I was in the swirly slide for too long and I shifted into a completely different universe to where now this is completely normal. I'm gonna be covering a lot in this video. We're gonna be talking about the origins of ads, how fast food ads became a thing, how they've evolved and how they're scarily still evolving and how all of these tactics actually really really work on us and invade our subconscious mind to get us to go to that taco bell to get those nacho fries <sighs> my favorite thing on the taco bell menu a day doesn't go by where i don't think of those nacho fries and even though today's topic is on the fast food industry and how advertising has gotten way out of hand it's still much deeper than you think. So yes, this video is gonna be another long one. So definitely go get a blanket, go get a Taco Bell Baja Blast, maybe some chicken nuggies for McDonald's, and let's do a deep dive into the very distorted world of meme marketable fast food. But of course, before we get into the video, guys, I have to pay my electricity bill <laughs> or else I'll be cold this winter. So here's a word from our sponsor. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in the creativity. What I wanted to do on Skillshare is to take a course about how to better myself, and I did so by taking the Ultimate Self-Care Playbook by Jonathan Von Ness. Yes, THE Jonathan Von Ness. I learned tips and tricks to really get to know myself better, and how to have a clearer mind. Of course, if this isn't for you, Skillshare has so many things that you can dabble in. Skillshare is specifically created for learning, which means that there's no ads and there's always new classes that you can look into, and you can dive deep into any skill level that you have. Skillshare offers membership with meaning so you too can enter a community of encouragement communication and inspiration the first a thousand of my subscribers to click on the link of the description of this video will get a one month free trial of skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today all right let's get into this video Okay, so in order to truly explain how we've gotten from this 
to this, I feel like it's very important to deep dive into the origin of advertising, specifically fast food advertising. The most early works of food advertisement in any platform can be dated back to the 1920s, where White Castle was the very first fast food place to advertise their food in a newspaper. And they also had radio announcements in the 1930s promoting their food. And the main demographic that White Castle was trying to attract with their marketing was actually the working class, but it wasn't until the 1950s where their main demographic completely changed because during the 1950s, White Castle began sponsoring children's TV shows such as the Cactus and Randy show. Basically, White Castle were the OG influencers before Jeffree Star was a thing. It was around this time where Americans started to spend a lot of money on food outside of the home and a lot of fast food chains caught wind of that. So they too decided to hop on the bandwagon that White Castle was doing and basically follow their business model. But of course, trying to do it better so that they can beat White Castle at their game. And the first fast food chain to do that successfully was McDonald's. McDonald's did a national advertising in the 1950s of their food. And in 1959, Minneapolis McDonald's operator Jim Zane began running radio advertisements and his sales completely skyrocketed. So just basically copying White Castle's formula. However, McDonald's also started supporting children TV shows with the Happy Meal specifically aimed for kids. The Happy Meal at McDonald's and just McDonald's in general, quickly became very iconic and became the nation's largest fast food chain in the 1970s and obviously remains to this day one of the biggest fast food chains. In the 2000s, the fast food industry spent $3 billion a year on television advertising. These TV commercials would have a specific formula to them where food was being shown off, people would use certain colors to make people subconsciously associate those colors with hunger, and the testing grounds for making fast food advertisements were pretty fast. But soon enough, advertisements for foods were becoming perfected. People started understanding how to target the audience they wanted to target, even if the advertisements were blatantly sexist. Call the police. Need to call the police. The point is, they were getting good at it. TV in general has been such a huge part of American culture. TV for the longest time was actually seen as like a family activity. People would gather around the TV every single night and watch their favorite shows. And the main generation that was brought up with this type of culture was mostly boomers and Gen Xers. So while the structure of advertising and family time was pretty big in these people's lives, as millennials grew up, a lot of industries started dying because millennials realized that um, <clears throat> TV is boring. Five minute advertising breaks were no longer seen as a passing of time where you can get up to use the restroom or go make popcorn so you can come back and watch your show. Instead, it was seen as a huge disruption, a waste of time. Get to my show. Where's my cocoa melon? And this basically where the phrase TV is dead comes from, but basically TV is now this dead form of media that not many of us consume anymore. And the reason for this is because one, TV has outdated content that none of us really care about anymore. Two, the social collective thing that many people used to do, which is watching TV as a family cherished activity, is just not a thing that is as cherished anymore because it is seen as almost like a waste of time because of our fast paced lives. We just don't have time to watch TV anymore, but we do have time to watch the entire season of Squid Game in one sitting. But that's because it has no ads, okay? And finally, three, technology has just become so advanced that there is a bunch of different ways for us to consume content, whether it's through our iPad, through our computer, through our phone, a lot of us just would rather watch our content somewhere else. And where do we usually go to watch our content? Well, you're using it right now, which is YouTube. And your second answer is most likely Netflix, which are the two biggest reasons why TV is dead. The ratings of a lot of TV shows have drastically dropped since viewers were now able to cut their cable and switch to watching their favorite shows with online streaming. And people were also turning to YouTube to watch more personalized content from creators that felt like actual human beings rather than actors. So around 2007 to 2012, this fast paced type of media became incredibly popular. And this is also actually known as instant culture. And instant culture is basically just this culture that we have created by us living such fast paced lives that we just expect results immediately. We expect instant food, instant answers on Google, for our apps to load instantly, for instant entertainment, just basically nonstop content. And once 2013 and 2015 hit, instant culture was no longer a culture, but honestly just a normal daily thing in our lives. And because of this, new platforms started creating content that was shorter and shorter, basically consuming a lot of micro content. And the perfect example of this is Vine. I don't really need to dive too deep into what Vine is, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Because the way that app had a chokehold on us in 2013 was ungodly. Whoa, <laughs> Hurricane Katrina. 
more like hurricane tortilla more like hurricane tortilla was that cringy i don't know it wasn't you are your mom vine was an american social networking hosting service that had short forms of videos where users would share six second long looping video clips you stupid they're not and it was a huge hit what's nine plus ten 21 you stupid obviously so much so that now we have apps that kind of pay a tribute to a fallen titan there was a shift happening within the demographic of media consumers the older demographic was still holding onto their tv cables while millennials and gen zers were turning to different types of media and because of this shift a lot a lot a lot of companies started to die out. And I'm not even talking about like TV brands or companies or channels. Millennials and Gen Zers have killed real brands such as Toys R Us, Macy's, Kmart, Sears, and of course, Blockbuster. And this is just the start of a very strange advertising gimmick that fast food places are going to try to perfect and eventually do perfect because fast food marketing is no longer on tv well it is but not in the same way that food advertising was starting to get into the twitter world which is where the demographics that they wanted to grab were at and what's the best way to target this audience well to mix in all the stuff that we talked about make it fast make it attention grabbing but also make it personal almost like to humanize it of course brands trying to become relatable is nothing new especially with the young folk where they sadly attempt to make meme marketable ads because before in the mid 2010s brands were actually trying to do this through meme culture it's so deliciously hot it's generating reactions from Ooh. everyone like the memer Ooh, eat spicy goodness like a boss and of course that ad completely backfired with the young folk as it was labeled as um cringe but you know what never fails to goop me the fact that wendy's used to be dogged on so bad by millennials and gen zers because they were known as the brand that was trying too hard to be hip but they're now probably the most notorious and famously followed fast food twitter account Ever. Y'all, they got 4.3 million followers. In 2017, Wendy's Twitter went viral when they started having beef with someone in their thread about their meat. Let's read into this, shall we? That was me pushing up my <laughs> invisible glasses. <laughs> Our beef is way too cool to ever be frozen. Your beef is frozen, and we all know it. You know we laugh at your slogan, fresh and never frozen, right? Like you're really a joke. Sorry to hear you think that, but you're wrong. We've only ever used fresh beef since we were founded in, in 1969. So you deliver it wrong? On a hot truck? Where do you store cool things that aren't frozen? Y'all should give up. McDonald's got you guys beat with their dope ass breakfast. You don't have to bring them into this just because you forgot refrigerators existed for a second there. Let's go. Well, pretty soon, Wendy's became a unique social media account. They got very popular for their snarky and sassy remarks, not only against other users, but also other brands. And through these consistently clever tweets, Wendy's branded themselves as the sassy friend you would want to go to lunch with. And by them doing this, it really worked for them. They experienced a 49.7% growth in profit that very year. And because of this wild success that they had, they weren't the only ones to hop on the bandwagon of becoming a relatable, memorable queen. Queen. Soon enough, Burger King and Dairy Queen, literally you name it, were trying to join this social media marketing gimmick so that they too can become popular with the young folks. Fast food brands were beefing with other fast food brands. Others like Denny's took a very different approach. Basically, people started to become fascinated that these fast food brands on Twitter were slowly developing quirky personalities. Denny's was weird. They were a weirdo. They don't fit in. Okay, but 10 points if you get the reference. Wendy's was super sassy. And KFC was hot now. Who knew that creating a thirst trap of the KFC guy was ever going to become a topic that I'd talk about to a bunch of people on the internet? Maybe my parents were right. <laughs> I should have stayed in college. But this new wave of advertising has seeped outside of the realm of fast food into Netflix, into Oreos, like you literally name it. And you probably will find a brand that tries to personify itself. I literally saw a Burger King commercial the other day of the Burger King mascot doing a tiktok dance to a viral tiktok sound i can't really show the commercial but you guys can search it up it's there but basically brands are becoming very aware perhaps a little too aware because now we have very passive aggressive ads where they're all like even though this ad is 15 seconds we know that you're gonna press skip anyways <laughs> doesn't bother us and then after the 15 seconds is over it'll be like turbo tax <laughs> anyways you can tell these companies are struggling 
struggling to get our attention. The problem is, what once was a funny, sassy food Twitter account slowly became something that everyone was doing. These were no longer funny Twitter accounts. They're not relatable. They're still multi-millionaire companies that truly don't care about you or your health or their own damn employees. But the more you think about that, the less it becomes funny and the more dystopian it feels. And a lot of people have realized this and have called it out. So of course, the very next step that these brands took to cover the fact that they were being called out is to become woke. They're not like other brands. They understand that they have a lot of power and money and they too can stand for political views, just like you. So a while back, if y'all remember, since the internet is quick to forget, Bo Burnham made a special called Inside. And in this special, Bo Burnham has a comedy skit where he makes fun of the fact that brands are trying to become woke. These brands are now trying to sell a message even though they're still just wheat thins. And you know that there is a word for everything and the word for this, my friends, is called woke washing. Woke washing is when a brand or company uses marketing to take a stance regarding a social issue just to make profit. Brands use progressive values and their advertising to get points for being woke and to build a loyal fan base of customers. Ah, what do you know? Somehow still very exploitative. Woke washing has been around for a while but has been a very huge topic of discussion because we've seen more and more examples of woke washing every day. Let's just be honest, we live in a culture where everyone's terrified of being canceled, but because of that, it really takes away the authenticity of people wanting to actually be progressive and then they end up looking like idiots because they pretend to be woke to avoid getting canceled, thus, in a way, woke washing. And if that isn't hashtag woke, I don't know what is. You know what? I think the internet has enough wokeness. How about we sleep now? I would love that. How about we all just take a nap? Whether it's the fact that brands like to pretend that they're pro-LGBT right as soon as Pride Month comes around, and then when Pride Month ends, they immediately turn their logo back into not being rainbow, <laughs> as if nothing ever happened, and as if gay people only exist in the month of June, or when companies open up about mental health, knowing damn well that their own employees don't even get paid enough to afford their own mental health services. As you can guess, woke advertising can either go good or bad, but mostly it goes very, very very, very bad, a time where woke washing has gone terribly, terribly wrong is the Pepsi Kendall Jenner ad and it's literally the perfect example of woke washing. I can literally not think of any other perfect example other than this example. Basically in 2017, Pepsi tried riding the woke train. The ad featured Kendall Jenner taking on an angry crowd that was rioting against the police. Kendall being the saint that she is, she offered a token of peace which was a Pepsi can. And she gave it to the police officers and she solved racism. <laughs> so yes of course it was not taken well and rightfully so because what the hell it was extremely tone deaf and it really did take such a large huge and real issue and basically just made it this small insignificant thing that could simply be solved by a pepsi can obviously pepsi had to apologize and although pepsi learned from their mistakes kendall jenner didn't because she literally just started a beer commercial pretending to be um a mexican girl in a field um you know what's sad when Jenny 6 9 is a better representation of our people than Kendall Jenner in that ad? And that's really saying something. Another example of terrible, terrible woke washing is when Starbucks encouraged their baristas to talk to their customers about race. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure 19-year-old Jared will definitely and enthusiastically talk to Karen about why maybe brown people deserve rights just like she does. And the worst ones that I've seen alongside the Pepsi Kendall Jenner commercial is when Chipotle tried making a LGBT burrito. They they really made a rainbow burrito and put you cannot be for real oh my god you for real no you for fake no you for real the worst one that i've seen is probably a brand that you wouldn't even expect but i'm just gonna show the picture why did they ever think that this would be a good idea? Of course, one of the biggest reasons why woke washing never seems to work is because these are 
social issues that companies just don't understand and their marketing campaigns don't even match up with how they actually structure their business. Usually brands that are already tied to messages that are almost like affirmations, such as Nike, you know, the whole just do it. Whenever they do something that has to do with activism, it actually is taken pretty well. And speaking of Nike, we actually saw this work very favorably when they did an advertisement featuring Kaepernick. Even though this ad triggered a huge boycott, it also earned the company six billion dollars and even earned a very strong loyal fan base within the demographic that they wanted so it was a huge win for this company it's not bad for a brand to touch on a social issue but it's kind of hard when these brands are no longer selling their products but a message and it definitely doesn't work if your brand doesn't match up with what you're talking about whether these companies choose to be woke or your friend, neither one really works in the end because one, well, a company can try to personify themselves and become a quirky character all they want, but they're still not a human. And being woke very often backfires on these brands. But these two approaches keep coming up in the advertising world because more than ever, ads are struggling to get our attention and they're also struggling for us to interact with them and buy their products because people have become very self-aware and understand when they're being sold a product. And very often, we don't like that. And this is because there are two very broad categories of human relationships. One is an exchange relationship and the second is a communal relationship, both of which the advertising world is trying so desperately to balance. Exchange relationships are when we trade for a mutual benefit. Communal relationships are based on a mutual caring and support. Normally, in the business world, you have to exchange relationships. I work because you give me money. I work for you because you give me opportunities. However, when it comes to advertising and business world, very often they try to insinuate themselves into your friend zone through a communal relationship, convincing you that there is a mutual caring and support relationship amongst the brand and person. And we actually see this through jingles all the time. I mean, just look at State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And this is the path that a lot of companies try to take when advertising their products. They're still trying to sell a product, but they're trying to do so by becoming your friend. So they're trying to be a communal relationship, all while being an exchange relationship. Relationship. Companies are ultimately in the business of charging their customers for products and services no matter how funny or woke they're trying to be. And they are likely to end up violating these communal relationships because of the very nature of business and friendship. Basically what I'm saying, the reason why there's such a polar opposite effect when it comes to brands trying to be relatable or friends or trying to be woke and why it never works is because these two approaches land into these two types of relationships in which by nature, cannot coexist. It's strange because I feel like we're going back to just wanting normal advertising where companies just show us, this is our product you want, that's fine. If not, okay, well, we have it here and it's gonna be here from you know July 1st to October 2nd, I don't know. And then the ad ends and you're like, huh, I don't want that or I do want that. I know for me, the only ads that have ever worked on me are when I see that the nacho fries are back in uh, Taco Bell. And it's not necessarily that their ads are funny or whatever, it's literally just the fact that I hear the word nacho fries and then I go immediately in my car and go get some. Anyways, it really leaves us feeling taken advantage of. It was once our place to make hot fan art of whatever we wanted, but now brands are doing that for us. Us. And this is why I strongly believe that this whole new marketing tactic is going to eventually die out. And it kind of is already. But then a part of me doesn't think it will because there's a reason why it became such a successful marketing tactic. The reason why this tactic was so incredibly effective is because it's difficult to realize when it's happening. This is next level advertising and it's very naive of us to assume that we're not susceptible to it. These ads are looking less and less like ads and looking more and more like memes that we show our friends and controversial topics that we now can talk about. Brands are not as dumb as we think they are and they're only going to become smart Smarter. Smarter? More smart? Mm, I don't know. It's late, guys. It's literally like 10 p.m. right now. My brain's at 1%. And so is my camera. So let me wrap this up quick. And it's really scary to see how far these companies are willing to go to get our attention. Something that I've been seeing on Twitter and Instagram are people seeing ads at the beach 
like in the water and even screens on what used to be glass doors this is some futuristic stuff okay people and pretty soon we'll all be like plankton eating holographic meatloaf and i'll be eating holographic nacho fries from taco bell all right y'all that is it for today's video i told you it was going to be a wild one and a lot more deep than you think this was really fun for me to deep dive into because i've always thought that the evolution of advertising and the path that a lot of these companies are now taking is kind of scary but also kind of exciting if you watch this entire video please comment a duck emoji down below in the comments but also in the comments please let me know your opinion on this if you also have seen these advertising gimmicks every now and then if you didn't even know and you just learned through this video please comment because i definitely want to know remember to like and subscribe or not no one's forcing you make sure that you follow me on my instagram and i also make music and it's kind of good so please check out my soundcloud but most importantly i want you to do something that you love today go listen to your favorite song that always puts you in a good mood go drink your favorite tea or spill the tea with your favorite friend i hope you all have a very lovely day and i'll see you guys in the next video bye